I've provided a ROM collection browser walkthrough in the past, but it was from a setup that was already complete. So this one is a fresh Kodi install. This is Helix. What I'm going to do is install this NES emulator with the ROMs mapped. Uh, it's actually a backup from another machine. This is not the machine that I run this all on. In fact, this machine, it could run the NES emulator, but it's not going to run the others. Either way, just to show you programs, again, I'm not even using my favorite theme or anything here. All I've installed is Steam Launcher Backup. So we're first going to install ROM Collection Browser. So programs, get more, and ROM Collection Browser by default is going to be in your install. So just go ahead and install that. It'll download. Now let me show you the way my files are set up for the NES. Now what I, again this is a backup so all of it is in place for me which means my NES artwork and I'll go ahead and delete all of this actually. Again I have this backed up so that's why I'm doing it but you can see all of this artwork it will populate so I'm just going to show you that I can delete this. Well, if I knew how to use a computer Alright, so what I'm deleting is the NES artwork, but I'm going to leave that folder because that's where I'm going to point to it to add those folders. So it's going to add the artwork folder, etc. So here's the NES execute file, which I'm going to map, which is the emulator. I do have my BIOS files already, so you're going to need all this prior. So if you don't have that in place, it's not going to work. Same with your NES ROMs. What I'm not going to do is delete these info files, which it also populates, but I would have to do that one by one. So whenever you get your ROMs, just kind of leave them in a folder like this and it's going to work. So it should be installed now. All right, ROM collection browser. No config file found because again, fresh Kodi install here. Yes, you want to scrape info online. Again, this is NES. Now this same emulator works for Game Boy so I could have some Game Boy ROMs and it would work perfectly fine but I'm looking for NES there we go I already have my drive mapped here that might be important to note that I did have to go to file manager and map my drive uh, so if you're not seeing your desktop there then you do not have your drive mapped I'm just launching this from my desktop. I recommend not keeping your files on your desktop. Again, this is temporary. I'm actually going to just undo all of this. So NES. So it tells you a walkthrough path to NES emulator. So that's going to be that .exe file, which is here. So the emulator parameters, I believe it's just going to be ROM for this, but I'm actually going to provide a resource. And you can just hop to emulator parameters and Nintendo, yeah, it's just ROM. So we're going to leave that alone. Hit enter. Now we're going to need a path to the ROM. So again, over here in my folder that's on my desktop, I have all my ROMs within one aggregated folder. And the naming convention doesn't matter. I do that to help myself out because holy crap, you get a lot of these and uh, it can be overwhelming. But you just want to practice your own organizational skills. You can actually lump all your emulator. ROM folders to ROM files in the same folder that works as well. It's not how I do when I have these all mapped. They're all in different ROM folders within the different console in this situation. So again, I gotta hop back to my C drive users. This is only because it's on my desktop. You're gonna go to wherever you have your files saved. All I'm doing is mapping my ROMs folder. Now I just need to go to OK because they're all found within here. I don't want to map to an individual one. So my ROM file masks, these are going to be the, I believe it's dot .NES, so you can actually look at your, uh, an individual ROM, but to be comprehensive, uh, again, just check the reference. So the asterisk is just uh, regex, which you don't even know, but asterisk captures everything before, dot .zip, comma, asterisk, dot .NES. So in addition to this file, it would capture any that are dot .zip. It's not being super responsive because I'm filming. So. We're just going to do asterisk dot well, zip comma asterisk dot NES and that's going to be it for the NES emulator. NES artwork. 
this is why I left that folder. Uh, that way I already had a folder and rather than that lump all these files in here. Uh, otherwise all those files that I deleted would just be arbitrarily thrown here and it would just lump everything up in this file. So I want them all within this NES artwork folder. So I would recommend having that existing before you walk through here because you're not going to be able to, and it says new folder, but it's just easier to do it through your OS. Just trust. Then OK. Again, I don't have to map them individually. Now if you have your other ROMs, you could do them right now. I recommend going back through your config menu, so I'm just going to say no. Now we're getting to our scrapers. Let me enlarge this a little bit. So we're going to look at the ROM collection. and import games. Now later when we go through the config menu uh, you can import by console. I just set up the one emulator here but that's this is the initial wizard which I know throws some people off but uh, you can actually BS all that information and go back through the config uh, which I'll touch on here in a second but I actually touch on more of my other media. That's where I like doing most of my configuring especially when I'm adding emulators to ROM collection browser but you see it's grabbing all of my artwork. Now the artwork, whether that grabs or not, since we have some time here, because it does pull from each individual database, you can see it's populating those as we speak, or as I speak. So these ROM files, if some of your information doesn't populate here, you might actually go back and rename your ROM files. That's the easiest way, and then just rescan, let it find it. But what it's doing is it's pulling from the games database. And I'll show you what that looks like real quick. I think it's games db uh, dot com or something. We'll figure it out. Let Google tell us. Dot net. The games db dot net. So what am I looking at here? What you want to do is have your names be consistent with this. That way, when you run the automatic crawler, the API syncs up and it finds it. Uh, the naming convention is a little different. It might have a blank there, and you could actually just upload an image. And since we use that percent sign ROM percent sign on the params that for the scanning then it'll find artwork that matches up. So let's see if there's some artworks that makes better sense. So NES ROMs will go in so Adventure Island with with a space in there, all the nuances. So NES artwork we'll look at box back. Adventure Island, you see how there's a space in there? So that's what that percent ROM percent sign means in that parameter. All these are going to match up exactly. So if they don't match up exactly, that's the only time you'd want to get custom there. But if you're just going to scan, let it scan. So what we're going to look for here is Adventure Island. I think all my naming conventions are really good. But again, if anything wasn't to pull up, I would go to this website. I would type in, like say if Adventure Island didn't pull the artwork. And I'd be like, OK, what the hell's going on? So what you want is because this is the database. That's actually the Game Boy version. So here's the one we're looking at. You want to make sure that your file name is that. So if my file name didn't have a space in it or something different, or if, you know somehow I misspelled island or something like that, adventure, then I would really want to fix that and just go back into the config and run the scan. All right, I'm back and it finished crawling everything. So I'm gonna have all of one console here. So this actually jumped me right into ROM collection browser. Now the actual text here. That's populated from the .nfo file. Um, and I had those before. Again, this was back, but I didn't want to delete those. I just deleted the artwork, which I regret because I had to sit through that crap again. But the .info file, if you ever wanted to customize this, you would simply open this in a text editor. We'll just do a notepad++. So what are we looking at? Adventure Island here? Let's go back to Adventure Island. An evil doctor has kidnapped Princess Leilani. That's most definitely a porn star name. I got my log file open, so it's gonna start refresh. So, an evil doctor has kidnapped Princess Leilani. So if it doesn't populate, and my suggestion earlier about changing the file name to help it match up with the database doesn't work, you could actually do it that way. Looks like they all pulled in uh, as anticipated. Now all that's left to test is to actually launch one. My NES config file.
Okay, so that's not going to work. Again, my NES config file or Nestopia config file is configured for a different machine. And I actually have, it's really annoying, annoying music for this, but I actually have it mapped to a D drive. So this is on a C drive. Again, completely different machine, <laughs> one way more capable of running this business here. Um, so typically, you can just hit Alt F4 and get the heck out of there, and you're going to be back to Cody. So it did actually work. Again, you're not going to get all those warning prompts. You're going to have to configure that out the emulator. Um, this is configured to a different machine, different drive, files in different locations. But that's how you set up the NES emulator. If you want to add anything, then you'll just go into where you're browsing. So Programs, ROM Collection Browser. If you're browsing, hit C on a Windows machine and a Mac probably Linux too, whatever the hell you're using, bring up your con. This is where I like to do everything. This is where my other video picks up. So I skip over that wizard because I would do add ROM collection. And say I, when I had Sega, I would have my folder adjacent to my NES folder, which would not be on my desktop because I don't want to clutter that shit up. But I'd have a folder for Sega and I would add it to it. Mm. It's going to work out. Uh, the videos are separately. That initial crawl does not work for videos. Uh, you'll have to reference my other video for that, but those are going to be grabbed through a different program. They're just not going to be pulled from databases because they're not on the databases. But again, you saw that I had deleted all my artwork. It actually launched Nestopia from here, gave me a bunch of BS messages, but it does work, and I wish you the best of luck. Give me a holler if you have questions.